Welcome to Hardware's Helm. I've been collecting some old vintage style PC computers so that I can do a few projects here on the YouTube channel. And before I get started in tearing these machines apart, I want to kind of go through them real quick and back up all of the hard drives. It's not that I really need to have the data, but it gives me a record of what the machine was, what was on it, and in some cases there's some pretty cool software that's left behind. Okay, the first computer that we're going to be imaging is the machine I will call Primo. It is not Primo at all. It was actually very damaged, but it was damaged before I got it. Um, the five and a quarter drive here is broken. The uh, optical drive actually will eject, but the face is gone. Uh, three and a half seems fine. Power switch seems fine. Everything else is fine. And I did get this machine to work, and there is a fair amount of stuff on the drive. It was a gamer machine. So we're going to go and pull the drives out, hook them up to our Athlon, and uh, make a copy. Should really use my Milwaukee impact driver, maybe I can get sponsored. Gotta remove the case correctly. Now, as you can see, I had this open before. I made note of what the hard drive settings are because this is a very <laughs> A very packed Intel 386SX, so it's not even the good one. But here are the two drives that we're concerned with, and they will likely be connected via a ribbon cable, not this one, to the controller card, which I'll get a close-up of that. Two hard drives. will be one ribbon cable here. This is the uh, CD-ROM. Next here into the I.O. card, which has floppy ID serial parallel game port. Looking this up is just like any ID hard drive. Red stripe goes to the power, assuming that it's plugged in correctly. As you saw, we took the two drives out of the Primo machine and I tried to get them hooked up the way they were in the Primo machine. And what was happening is that in, in Parted Magic, it was seeing the 130 megabyte drive, but not the 424 megabyte drive, which was the Western Digital Caviar. For some reason, it was just kind of skipping over it. So what I did was shut down, unplug the Maxter drive, was able to make a successful image off the Western Digital Drive. And now we're going to try and make an image of the Maxter Drive. I was able to boot up off of a DOS disk and could confirm that there is data on the Western Digital and the Maxter Drive appeared to be empty. Now, I'm not sure if that was, I'm not sure if that was because it was formatted or that the person never used it. In some cases, these old machines came with a really small hard drive, and then later on they upgraded it, and then just moved that drive to be a secondary storage drive. So chances are, it's a formatted drive, but with the DD Rescue program that I'm going to be using, we should be able to do an unformat to see if there's anything on the drive. Ultimately, I don't necessarily care about it, but I'm really kind of curious. And that's something that we can look into a little later. First thing I'm going to do is just pull up the disk health. That lets me know if the drive got recognized. And here it is, the Maxter 7120AT, which is at dev SBD. We need to know that so that we can get the rescue software to read from it. Here we go to rescue. Oh, 
what we're looking for is the DD Rescue GUI. To use DD Rescue, you basically select your source, which from the GSmart control, we know that it's SDB. So we pick SDB as our source. And then we have a log file that gets created. And we want to save this to the Data Traveler 3.0, which is at SDC. Select this one once it mounts the drive. Then we select this one. Images. And I've already started, so I'm going to change this one to Primo D. Click save. Destination has to be to a file path. And we pick SDC, images, Primo D. Click save. It always wants us to check the settings, so we go in here to settings, and basically this is where you can configure DD Rescue to look for files that have been deleted or are corrupt and try to piece them back together. We're just going to use the default settings, save and close. And at this point, we can click start. Since the drive is mostly empty, it should go pretty quick. Now DD Rescue has completed. And now we're done. These image files can be then blasted back to a drive or we can use them to do some data recovery. The point is now that it's an image we can save a copy of it while we manipulate the data to see what we can and can't recover. When I got done imaging all the machines I went to go and copy them to my network server so they could be stored and pulled back up later. And antivirus kicked off saying, hey, you got a problem with one of your image files. So I was like, well, let's take a look. And it narrowed it down to the Primo D, which was the drive that I imaged here on the video. And I started looking at the map file. And this is a file that DD Rescue creates so that you can see what it sees and be able to use it for debugging purposes later. And as we go through here, we can see uh, things like when it happened, what it's doing, and the version that we use, which is actually one of the older versions, but it's the one that worked on the Athlon 1 gigahertz, which is kind of fun. So if we scroll down through here, we'll start to see things such as the dev sdb1 this is the first partition on the sdb uh, host device maxer 7120at boot record strings ms dos 5 no name fat 16. if we scroll over a little bit further we'll see stuff about the non-system disk error these are the the errors that come up when it doesn't know what to do however what i'm looking for is the virus we do a search. We search for stoned. We will see a boot record string. Your PC is now stoned. Legalized marijuana. You know, that was just part of that particular virus. This was a boot sector virus called the stoned virus. And this particular virus was also the one that created a whole slew of others. You see, the stoned virus it was annoying, but it was more of an annoyance where. So it would copy itself to other disks, and it might even make it into a hard drive factory when they're writing the master boot records to all the drives. It just happens to also write the stone virus to those. 
Now, a virus like Michelangelo that would go and delete everything on your drive on March 6th works the same way. It uses the same code as the stone virus, but it has a malicious package attached to it instead of just telling you that your PC is stoned when you boot it up. Overall, this was actually kind of a fun experiment. I look forward to messing around with this particular virus a little bit more because, it, like I said, it's somewhat harmless. Well, if you'd like to know more about these particular projects, be sure to check back to Hardware Asylum. Like, subscribe, share, and thanks for watching.